Yeah, you can just go for it. Are we ready, Robbie? Ready? Plan. Alright, guys. So yesterday we were looking at yet again kind of the graphical equation relationship or connection um, with these exponential functions. And we were specifically trying to highlight the description of a graph, like increasing growth, decreasing decay, whatever that might be, and how that's related to certain pieces or numbers or parts of the equation. So we're going to take a look at a few more examples today, kind of in a, a general sense. But remember, our ultimate goal is for me to give you an equation and you write the, uh, you draw the graph, or for me to give you a graph and you write the equation. I think we're actually going to get to some of that ultimate goal by the end of today. But we still have to keep in mind these characteristics or these connections to help us do that. Can you help me out? Did we, f did we finish page 306, those three graphs at the bottom? We have the last one? Okay. We have this one? Okay, so let's go ahead and check this one out. Um, we were trying to pick apart the equation, look at different values, and in this case, we're trying to generate a rough graph, a rough shape. That way we can classify it as either growth or decay. So what can we possibly look for in this example for number three to maybe start us off with that description? Can we, for instance, think about what the numbers in the equation are telling us? Good, Julia? Okay, base is 3 over 2, which is bigger than 1, okay. That's definitely a number we should look for in the equation. Can we identify anything else that might be of importance? Go, Blair. There are two flips. Um, we have the negative out front and the negative x in the power spot. All right, is there something else that might be interesting to note from the equation? Go to Alicia. At three, good, that's our constant term on the end. Okay, so with this information, we're gonna to try to draw a rough sketch of the final graph, okay, the actual graph, but we're gonna take this base value to kind of help us um, figure out what this graph started as before we did these two flips. So if our base is bigger than one, can you describe the shape of graph? Can you classify it as growth, decay, increasing, decreasing, whatever that might be? Go, Blair. That's increasing growth. Okay, so base is bigger than one. This is our beginning basic graph. Okay, increasing growth. So we gotta think about if we were to take this graph and flip it both ways, because we labeled those two flips, what would the ending graph look like? We're still gonna have an asymptote. Maybe we'll label it at three. Can we visualize what it would look like if we flip it both ways? Go Blair. Increasing decay. So increasing going up, decay meaning approaching an asymptote. Okay, so possibly something like that. Let's check it out. If we take this beginning graph and first of all flip it upside down, it would probably look like this blue one. And then if you take the blue one and flip it left and right, it will look like this red one. So the ending graph will label as increasing decay. Right. Um, can we perhaps make sense as to why this ending graph is correct? Can we think about some of the patterns that we noticed yesterday from the table?
is kind of related back to these flips that we were exploring yesterday. Any thoughts? All right, I'm pretty sure we wrote them down at the bottom of that table, but let's just go ahead and refresh. We said that if we have any flip whatsoever, that was gonna change the increasing or decreasing nature of the graph. But notice how if we happen to have both, it doesn't change. Almost like a double negative, if you will. It kind of cancels each other out. You have two flips, so it's gonna stay the same. So the increasing part did not change. Okay, we noticed that kind of pattern yesterday. However, can we identify which flip is responsible for changing the growth or decay nature? Yeah? The y-axis. The y-axis, okay? So obviously, if we have both flips, that means one of them is a y-axis. So you're definitely going to be switching the growth or decay aspect. Now, since you have both, the increasing, like I said, does not change. So maybe instead of having to think about beginning graph and how it flips, if we're familiar with those two connections, we might be able to go straight here, okay? If I know the beginning one is increasing growth and I have two flips, I know I'm still gonna be decreasing, but a y-axis is gonna change growth to decay. So if I can go from this description to this description, I can then draw the graph appropriately. Okay, you have more than one way to get there. If we're familiar with those um, properties, or if you want to go through the actual flipping of the graph to generate the, the new one. Okay, so there's always more than one way to do something. All right, we're going to take a look more of this today. But in this case, what we're going to focus on today mostly is instead of me starting with an equation and then trying to describe the graph, we're now going to start with a graph and try to describe the equation. So we're going to go the other way. But we still have to look for the same characteristics to help us make these connections. So for our first one, they give us a general picture of what the equation should look like, but or what the graph should look like, but they don't actually give us the real equation. They kind of give us the setup of it. Okay, kind of missing pieces going on here. So we're gonna try to look at the graph, look at the equation, try to make connections between the two to see if we can figure out some things about these missing numbers in the equation itself. First, first of all though, looking at the graph, can we classify it as either growth or decay? We're not really going into the increasing or decreasing part. This is just a general description, yeah. Because? Okay, so uh, moving away from horizontal asymptote to the right. Just like how we were dealing with the right side of a graph when we were doing polynomials, the right side of the graph is pretty important for these exponential functions too. Okay, whether you're going towards it or towards the asymptote or away from it. So let's think about that. On the right-hand side, if we're going away from the asymptote, that means we're either going up forever or down forever. And based off this graph, notice how we go down forever. So we'll label the right end behavior as negative infinity. If the right-hand side, though, is going up or down forever, that means the left-hand side is approaching the asymptote value. So for our left end behavior, it seems like we're approaching two. So we'll actually go ahead and label that as the horizontal asymptote. We'll say it's y equals two. All right, so some characteristics that we can pick apart from the graph. Let's see if we can now use the graph to perhaps help us, or perhaps help us to figure out some of these values from the equation. So if we think about the letter A, which is representing our leading coefficient, okay, the number in front of the base, 
we want to try to figure out what this a value is. Now, at this point, we might not be able to figure out the a value exactly. Okay, we'll eventually get there. But I think, I'm pretty sure, at least I hope, based off the graph, we should be able to figure out something about the letter A. Looking at the picture, can we conclude anything about the leading coefficient? Yeah? Because? It's, it's below the horizontal asymptote. Okay, so I'm going to say A is less than zero. That means the same thing as negative. So A is negative because the graph is below the horizontal asymptote. Okay. We might not know, at least at this point, what the actual number is, but at least we know it should be negative. All right, we're going to skip B for a moment. We'll come back to that. Can we perhaps conclude something about C in our equation? Notice how C is that constant term on the end. I think in a previous section, we've seen this as the letter D, okay, but in this case, the way the equation's set up, it's just the letter C. Okay, they're using a different letter, but it's still representing the constant term. You my idea, Blair? So that's the horizontal That's the horizontal asymptote. Okay, so in this, ex in this case, we actually know the numbered value. So C is 2 because this is the horizontal asymptote. All right, let's see if we can figure out something about the base. Again, we might not know the exact number, but maybe we can figure out something about it. And what we've seen so far with the base is that we really only have two options. It's either bigger than one or something between zero and one. So we're gonna kind of narrow it down to see which one it is. And this is gonna be a little bit different because if we think about this example that we just went over on the previous page, Notice how we started with the basic graph because we knew what the base was, and then we changed the basic graph into the ending graph, okay? If we think about what we have in this example, we have the ending graph, and we have to think about what we had as the beginning one, okay? So we're kind of working backwards, which can be difficult, but again, we can think about it. So. If this is our ending graph, we gotta think about what graph did we start with, and if we applied any flips, this is what it would end up as. So let's take a moment and see if we can identify if we have any flips going on in this equation. Can we label anything? Do we notice any negatives anywhere in the equation itself? You see something, Blair, here? There's a negative in the x. Okay, so what type of flip is that? That's the y-axis. Okay. So we definitely see a y-axis from the equation they provide. Is that the only one we have? The a is negative. Okay, this is tricky. Notice how if you just look at the equation here, it seems like there is not a negative out front. But after we analyzed the graph, we concluded that there should be one out front because it's below that horizontal asymptote. So this is actually a hidden flip that might not necessarily be provided to us at the beginning. Okay, we figured it out through our analysis of the graph. So we actually have an x-axis flip as well. Okay, we have both. So let's see if we can figure out what the beginning graph was. Maybe we'll start with our descriptions. This ending graph, can we describe it as increasing, decreasing, growth, or decay? Yeah? Decreasing growth. Okay, I'm gonna abbreviate D and G. Okay, so decreasing growth. So let's think about our pattern here. Okay, we have both flips. So what can we say about the beginning graph? Is it still decreasing or does it change to increasing? If you have both flips, if you have that double negative, 
Yeah? It's going to stay decreasing. Okay, so I'm going to label down here basic is still decreasing. What about the growth description? Does it stay growth or is it changing to decay? Can we revisit it again? Which flip changed the growth or decay nature? Yeah? The y-axis. The y-axis. And if we labeled both, okay, we definitely have a y-axis flip. So if the ending graph is growth, that means the beginning graph was decay. Okay? So we have a decreasing decay beginning graph. Does that describe a base bigger than one or a base between zero and one? If you wanted to draw it, decreasing decay would look something like that. What base would develop this type of basic graph? It's between 0 and 1. Okay, so between 0 and 1, and we'll say because there are two flips. Okay, what I've seen over the years is that this base description, trying to figure this out, is probably the one that most students have difficulty with. The other ones seem to be kind of straightforward, but it's the base one that you have to do a little thinking, or you have to be very familiar with those properties or patterns that we went over yesterday. Okay, so again, just to rehash, if you have any flip whatsoever, it changes the decreasing or increasing nature, unless you have both. Okay, because that's your double negative, it's gonna stay the same. If you have a y-axis flip, that changes the growth or decay nature of the graph. So they're both related to the flips. You have to be careful as to which ones you have to help you determine this type of base that is going to be in your equation. All right, let's try another one just for practice. Looking at the next one, they have the equation at the top and a provided graph. Can we describe growth or decay? Good, Grace? Because? because? It's approaching the horizontal asymptote. Approaches horizontal asymptote to the right. All right, so the right end behavior should approaching the asymptote based off the graph that looks like negative 1. That means the left-hand side is either going up or down forever, and based off the picture, it's going <laughs> up. So we could also label the actual equation of the horizontal asymptote as negative 1. All right, let's try to think about what some of these numbers in the equation should be. Can we conclude anything about our a value, that leading coefficient out front? You're on a roll, yep. Perfect, because graph is above horizontal asymptote. Good. So actually, at this point in time, we know that since the A value is positive, we do not have an x-axis flip. Okay, there's no <coughs> negative out front. Let's maybe jump down to the C value. Okay, if we kind of look at the previous example, we notice how the constant term is related to that horizontal asymptote location. So we can say this one's negative 1.
All right, let's try to figure out our base. So this ending graph we already said was decay, okay, from kind of our first description. And as we draw the graph, our pencil's going down, so we could say it's decreasing as well. So the final graph is decreasing decay. Let's see if we can use the flips to figure out what the basic graph description should be. Can we label any flips? What do you think, Lenny? There's a y-axis from the equation. Good. Okay, we said that there was not an x-axis flip because the a was positive, but notice how the equation has that negative in the power spot. Okay, so we do have one flip. So is decreasing going to stay or is it going to change to increasing? <coughs> What do we think? It's going to change, okay? One flip changes it, both flips negate it, so basically you're, it's going to stay the same. Okay, so the basic graph was increasing. Let's see if the growth or decay nature is going to change. We labeled a y-axis flip, so will it stay growth, or sorry, stay decay or change to growth? it's going to change. Okay, So our basic graph was increasing growth. If you want to draw it, looks something, something like that. So what base would produce this beginning graph? Maybe if we use some logic, notice how this graph was different from the previous one. So if the previous base was between 0 and 1, then this one should be bigger than 1. Okay, we'll say because there is a y-axis flip. Do you guys think you can try the last one? See how you do? All right, so I put up the solutions I had for basically every piece except for B. <coughs> Am I okay to assume that we're good with all of those? Is it the B one that's a little trickier? It can be? Okay. 
How do we do at least on all on those other ones? Pretty good? Okay. Let's think about B. Can we identify any flips in the equation? I'm seeing head nods. That's good. Okay, so there's no negative x, so that means no y-axis flip. And we said A should be positive, so there's no x-axis flip. All right, so no flips. So let's go ahead and label this final graph. We already said it was growth. And as we trace the graph, notice how your pencil goes up, so it's increasing. So if the final graph is increasing growth, and you do not have any flips, any changes, what can we classify the basic one as? It's the same thing, right? So if, you're, if the basic one is actually the same shape as this final one, then this would be a base bigger than one because it looks very similar to the second example that we did. Right, so base bigger than one because there are no flips at least for this particular example, okay, based off the equation that they provided us. How did we do? Pretty good? Not too bad? Yeah. How it's this? Okay, so it goes back to the beginning I'll say, I'll say beginning instead of basic. So what if, for instance, I had 2 to the x versus a base of 1 half to the x? If I start to plot numbers, okay, 2 to the 0 power would be 1, 2 to the first would be 2, 2 to the squared would be 4, 2 to the third would be 8, do you notice how we're getting that shape to it? Okay, so a base bigger than one is gonna be increasing growth. If I do a half, on the other hand, a half to the zero is one, a half to the first is a half, a half squared is a quarter. If I start to go negative though, that's gonna switch the base or flip it. So then this would be two, this one would be four, so we get that decreasing decay, okay? So the basic graphs stem from the base that you have, okay? Does that answer your, your question? Okay. All right, we're doing good with graphs. If we switch the page, let's see if we can do the same analysis but related to a table, okay? A different piece of information. Some of you might feel the urge to plot the points from the table to get a graph. That's perfectly fine, but I want us to start to think about some things that we can look for specifically in the table format and not necessarily off the graph. Okay, but let's see if we can approach these um, very similarly. Looking at the table of values, they also give us the basic kind of general format of the equation at the top, at least for this example. Can we classify this exponential function as growth or decay? Yeah. There we go. Left or decay because the right y values approach 1, which is basically that horizontal asymptote. You're getting closer and closer and closer to it. So actually, let's maybe skip to this last box. Identify the equation of the horizontal asymptote. y equals 1. It says give a reason, we'll say right and behavior. Speaking of end behavior, that's what the middle two questions are, okay? State the right end behavior. We notice that's approaching one, okay, our horizontal asymptote. So if the right-hand side of an exponential function approaches the horizontal asymptote, that means the left-hand side is either going up or down forever. What can we say about the left end behavior? It's going up. Look at the left y values. They're very, very positive. Okay, so we're going towards positive infinity. All right, 
Based off the table, can we think about what our leading coefficient value should be? Either positive or negative. Can we think about what characteristic we should be looking for to help us with that maybe? If it's above, if it's above or below. Okay, so can we tell based off the table if this graph is above or below this horizontal asymptote of one? What should we be looking for? What do you say, Logan? Above? Why? Say it again. There's no, you mean there's no negative numbers for the Y's? Yeah, okay, so look at all these Y values. Okay, aka the height of a graph. Notice how every single one of them is above this horizontal asymptote of one. So graphically, we're gonna be above that horizontal asymptote. So we'll say because all Y values are above one. All right, let's skip B, the base. We'll come back to it. Can we figure out the value of C? Look at the equation. Notice how that represents the constant term. That would be one because this is the horizontal asymptote. All right, let's check out the base. Can we describe, bless you, based off the table, what this graph would be classified as? Increasing growth, decreasing decay. Well, we actually said decay previously. Can we classify it as increasing or decreasing? I think it's gonna be decreasing, okay? Maybe we wanna draw a little picture of this. So here's our horizontal asymptote at one. We approach the asymptote on the right-hand side. We said the left-hand side goes up forever and we should be above the asymptote, okay? So here's a, a basic visual of what the table is giving us. If you trace it from left to right, your pencil goes down. Okay, so decreasing decay. Let's try to think about what the beginning graph looked like. Okay, and that's eventually gonna lead us to the base. Can we identify any flips? What do you think, Lenny? All right, so from the equation, they tell us a y-axis. Do, do we have an x-axis? I'm seeing head nods, that's good, because our a value, that number out front is positive, okay? So notice how we only have one flip so that will change the increasing or decreasing nature. Okay, so our beginning graph, we can classify as increasing. And that one flip we happen to have is specifically a y-axis flip, which is gonna change the, inc the decay or growth nature. So if this table represents decay, the beginning graph we started with was growth. So if the beginning graph was uh, increasing growth, what type of base should we have? B is gonna be greater than one. Okay, B is greater than one because we only have a y-axis flip. Okay, for this particular example, that's what we're gonna use as our reasoning. All right, something a little different because we haven't done this on the other ones. Can we identify the domain and the range based off the table? We kind of drew a rough graph. Maybe that could help us as well. Yeah. All real numbers. Okay, forever left, forever right. As you drag your pencil, there's no holes, jumps, or vertical asymptotes we have to worry about, like we saw with the rational functions in the last unit. What about the range? I know we have the graph, 
a rough graph. So you can drag your pencil, but I wonder if we can figure out the range just based off the table. Based off the table, what does the lowest y value seem to be? Yeah? Getting closer and closer to 1, but if it's a horizontal asymptote, we can't touch it. We're just approaching it. Okay, so our lowest y value is 1. What about the highest y value? I know in the table it's 513, but what if we were to go even more to the left? Probably positive infinity. Okay, and notice how that makes sense based off our picture. If you drag it low to high, you start at 1 and would end at that infinity, if that actually ever ends. Okay, how are we doing with the table? Pretty good. Okay, on Tuesday, after your long weekend, I'm jealous, we're going to actually start to find the values of A and B, like the numbered values, but at least for now we have some descriptions, which is a good starting point.